First and foremost, it is not a mistype in the title, this is a real deal. Second, this super special version of this watch has one crucial component, which I think is actually better than the $450 variant. So what is it? Well, we have it here and we have the other one here too. So let's find out. Hello and welcome back! We do have a few questions to cover here, so let's jump right in. Question number one, of course, is what are we not getting here compared to a more expensive version? Then, did they actually compromise on materials? What about the loom? What about the build quality and finishing? And yes, the ultimate question – should you actually consider one? And before we get to unpacking all that, a quick disclaimer – nice guys from San Martin sent this watch to me and asked if I could bring this crazy price timepiece to your attention ahead of the upcoming 1111 sale. An offer I of course could not refuse. I don't have to send this watch back, hence you probably saw a pop-up at the start of this video. And rest assured, on my part I will provide a detailed review of this watch and there will be of course all the relative links to the product listings in the description of this video. So the first thing they cut is kind of obvious. Yep, you are not gonna get this nice and soft and squishy leatherette watch case, which personally I don't think I'm gonna miss that much. We do get though an old school hot plastic shell, which actually has everything you will need inside, including a bracelet adjustment tool, which will prove to be handy. So, so far so good. We are also limited in the number of available colorways, only black and blue. So if you want, let's say, a gray or a green one or a coffee one, well, then you're out of luck. Then you will need to consider a more expensive option. Now let's take a look at dimensions. For clarity, I'll put the key measurements on the screen. Mostly the dimensions are much of a muchness. The bezel diameter seems to be a smidge of a millimeter wider. Not a big deal, this is mostly likely to the slightly different bezel grip finish. It is pretty much only visible under the macro lens. And we will look at it when we examine the bezel in more detail. Now case widths are identical at 40 millimeters and we get 20 millimeter lug widths here on both watches. The case heights are slightly different by 0.4 0.4 mm. This is possibly due to ever so slightly domed sapphire crystal and additional fraction of a millimeter on the back of the case, which is probably done to accommodate a slightly taller different movement. And I will talk in a bit more detail about the movement in a moment. Another point of difference is the lock to lock measurement. It is about 1.5 mm longer on the more affordable variant. This is so far the largest visual difference we come across. However, with inverted end links, this extra 1.5 mm makes pretty much no difference, especially compared to my very early version of this watch, which still had protruding end links, giving me a lock to lock span of 54.5 mm. Now, to have a level playing field, I had to install the inverted end links on my watch halfway through filming this episode to make sure that when we compare the bracelets, we actually compare apples with apples, so to speak. Movement. Okay, as I alluded just now, we do have different movement here, which of course helps to save the cost on this watch. However, I don't think it is to the detriment of the quality. You see, this variant uses Japanese Seiko NH35 movement instead of the Chinese PD5000 or Swiss SW200 movements, which are ever so slightly slimmer and that explains that extra fraction of a millimeter of the case height. Now, I'm not going to undermine PT5000 movement, which is pretty much identical to the Swiss Solita to SW200 200 movement, however, when it comes to reliability, my money will still be on Seiko NH35 or Swiss Solita. These movements have been around much longer and do have a stronger reliability record. So in this particular case, if you are not going for $450 Swiss Solita version, then an H35 option for $158, that is almost 300 bucks less, is a really good alternative here. Case. Case finishings are almost identical, high quality as we very much used to by now on timepieces from San Martin. The curvature of the lugs is slightly different, however, it makes almost no difference on the wrist. In terms of the crown, this new watch now has all the consistent branding applied, including on the crown, which is good. Personally, I still wish they used the shark on the divers. What are your preferences? Well, do let us know in the comments. Is it the shark or the latest logo or the letter S that they used at some point? 
bezel. Okay, moving to the bezels now. Again, visually pretty much identical. The bezel grip is slightly different, with the newer watch having a slightly grippier feel, if you like. Hard to say which one is better really comes down to a personal preference, I guess. Now, when it comes to bezel action, there is a bit of a difference, mainly in the way these bezels sound. So, both bezel actions are really good. Very precise and tactile, pretty much no backplay on neither of them. However, the new lower-priced version is, for some reason, considerably louder. And here how both of them sound. Crystal. Okay, not many differences to see here. A really good quality double dome sapphire crystal. My guess is that a slightly more curvy dome of this crystal is to accommodate a slightly taller central movement pinion of the second H35 movement. And as far as I can tell, the anti reflective coating is on par between the two crystals, so not much of a compromise in this department. Dial. And before we look at the bracelets, where most of the differences actually are, let's take a brief look at the dial, where San Martin got a bit of a nice surprise for us. That is that crucial detail that I referred to at the start of this video. So, the dial execution and hands on both watches are pretty much identical. Very high quality and one of my favorite. We do have a slight difference between the writing above the 6 o'clock marker, which is not particularly relevant, because if you buy the latest version of this model, the writing is different still, with 200 number printed in red font. Also, looks like more expensive version has or had a little cover on the pinion, however, looking at the latest product pictures, this feature is not present in the newer releases, so we can possibly discount it here as well. Now, where things are noticeably different, though, is the color of the loom. And here we get C3 Retro Superluminova, which glows brighter than the BGW9 on the more expensive model. Ok, it does make the loom color in the daylight a bit more lighter, which comes down to personal preference, and personally I don't mind it. And while in the daylight the difference is very subtle, it does make a noticeable difference in the dark. So both looms last about the same time, but the newer, more budget-friendly model with C3 glows noticeably brighter, and for me this is actually a plus. Bracelets. Ok, this is where we will find most of the differences, starting with the rivets on the sides of the links. However, having said that, from what I can see on the product pictures these days, all the models of this watch, including the most expensive ones, are actually shipped with very similar bracelets, with no rivets. Now, putting the rivets aside, we get a very similar style three-link bracelet with inverted end links. You see, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I did install inverted end links on my original version of this watch, so we can now have a more accurate comparison. So, in terms of tolerances, the bracelet feel very similar, we have well-machined solid links on both watches, no complaints. Now, it looks like to save cost on the bracelet, San Martin decided to use everyone's least favorite pin and collar system to connect the links. Ok, I do prefer screws like on more expensive version, but considering the price point, it is still ok, in my opinion. It is a bit of a pain to adjust, but once done, it works pretty well. Some say even better than screws. Now, at very close inspection, I could say that finish on the more expensive bracelet is somewhat more lustrous, maybe. What do you think? Well, do let us know in the comments. But again, this difference, if there is one, can only be spotted if we have these two watches side by side. And now the clasp. Well, Truth be told, this newer, cheaper watch has actually better clasp than my original version one. I mean, from the functional perspective, these are pretty much identical double pusher clasps, but from the design and finishing perspective, the new, cheaper version is much better with the applied logger and fully milled inner part of the clasp, including the push buttons. However, the latest version of the expensive model will get something like this clasp. But even here we still have an identical milled inner mechanism and identical applied logger. Ok, the clasp milled outer shell with high polished bevel edges is one of the latest San Martin's designs, and it is nice, so it is different. However, it doesn't look like San Martin will include its latest on the fly adjustment clasp, so it looks like we still get pretty much the same functionality here. 
So in summary, case almost identical, dial almost identical with the brighter loom, bezel identical, crystal slightly different, but no visual compromises in quality. Movement, well, we've got Seiko NH35, which I think is the best pick for the price point, in my opinion. Bracelet, almost the same, except for the pins instead of screws. And finally, the clasp, partly milled versus fully milled, with the same functionality. Ok, for completeness I should mention that there is also a midway version SN008B, which has everything the G model has, but with Seiko NH35 movement and a slightly taller case to accommodate it. However, it is still almost 100 bucks more expensive than this budget version. Could it be a viable compromise? Well, there will be of course a link in the description. So, to really distill this, are you prepared to pay an extra $200 or $300 for a Swiss Elite option to get a different movement and a fully milled clasp? I might be oversimplifying this though, or am I? Well, do let us know in the comments. But if San Martin vs San Martin is a bit too straightforward for you, then check out my other video about Steel Dive GMT taking on Seiko GMT. No punches pulled in that video. And to give us a like if you find this video helpful and of course don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. As always, thank you for watching, take care and I will see you in the next video.